Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. We had a slow start to this morning, but I have a lot to talk about today, which includes I have an interview for Missoula Aging Services, are back again for their monthly interview, talking about a lot of their services that they provide for uh, the elderly and uh, those who care for them. So we're going to talk to them a little bit after my new segment. I also have a clip from uh, Zootown Arts Community Center in which they put on a the Ladies Who Lead a Cabaret performance, which happened a couple weeks ago. I also have uh, the premiere kind of uh, in-person episode of Dude I Just Drew uh, that I'm going to be showing on my show. Uh, just the highlights and stuff like that. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, COVID restrictions in Australia to Israel as Delta strain continues to spread. Uh, some restrictions are being uh, re-implemented with masks and other things in some of those countries. U.S. could not be bothered as our goal to reach 70% of one dose vaccine per person uh, by July 4th it isn't going to happen. But places like Hawaii, uh, who are a big travel destination, has made it uh, harder for people to uh, visit Hawaii until they meet their 70% of goal of vaccinating their residents. Derek Chauvin, the man convicted for the death of George Floyd, uh, sentencing is happening today. And I and I can't really talk too much about this because it is a uh, thing that is currently going on right now. So I'm gonna just going to move on to the next thing so you guys can check that out. Um, the U.S. is uh, seeing some real groundwork being done in the military justice system, which for many years has handled interpersonal conflicts under the guise of the military. But the change in place may open the door for outside litigation to get involved in cases that would originally be up to military staff. This comes at the heels of the overall sex-related crimes that are often overlooked by the military or shrugged off in some cases. A 2012 Pentagon survey found that approximately 26,000 women and men were sexually assaulted that year. Only three... Uh, uh, 3,000 cases were reported, and at the time uh, went on in 2013, 5,000 cases were reported, but eight, uh, 484 cases went to trial, and 360, uh, 376 resulted in convictions. Convictions, mind you, have been getting overturned. Calamity for higher ups in the military exists, and overall potential for protecting themselves. Um, so far, this is a bipartisan-supported uh, Senate bill is on track for approval, but it's unclear if cases that include manslaughter and murder will be included in this. And this basically just means that they're going to have some outside litigation, being able to bring in lawyers who specialize in th these kind of cases, rather than just leave it up to the people who are in the military. Um, 2012 was a big year for pointing out entities um, uh, that have often handled sexual assaults issues in in-house. Um, the list includes, of course, the University of Montana here in Missoula. Uh, just look up the book Missoula, Rape in the Justice System in a College Town, uh, back when reports of rape uh, have uh, occurred. And uh, as a result, the Department of Justice came down in the city of Missoula to help clean it up. Um, speaking of Missoula, as Missoula aims to start the recreational weed business, plans to add a 3% tax on those products are being considered for the ballot. If voters approve taxing an estimated 7 Hundred and sixteen thousand dollars annual would be going towards Missoula County, and it would it wouldn't be the first time Missoula voters approved in a local option task uh, option tax. Uh, so this gas tax, uh, uh, the gas tax, which resulted in a one point one million dollar annu annual revenue for the infrastructure, was passed last uh, election by Missoula voters, and so far fifty percent of the revenue of the three percent weed tax would go to the county. 45% of the revenue to the city and the remaining 5% to the Montana Department of Revenue. So overall, the state tax is 20% for the state of Montana in terms of recreational weed, weed sales. Um, but Washington is the highest at 37%. And so far, a decision on the 3% will occur on July 1st during the uh, county commissioner's meeting. Uh, Speaking of government, let's talk about the filibuster. That's been a hot topic and which has been an old relic of the past which would delay or dissuade passage of bills. And as of now, standing in the way for what's called For the People's Act, this act would overhaul elections in the U.S. and on the federal level to look deeper into voting rights in which the GOP has coined Screw the People Act. This would lessen powers of the state's election in favor of a more uniform set of standards that for many states that have come close in the race of 2020 would uh, supersede a lot of the new plans in place that a state level that were implemented as a result of the election. All right, so this seems to be a reaction of a reaction. So in, in many ways, uh, with the 2020 election, th there is a lot of folks who are just like, this is vote, this is, this, is, this is a rigged election, all that stuff. They looked into it, no voter fraud whatsoever, so the states decided to uh, 
just continue the uh, train and move forward with uh, legislation in the state levels to control more of the uh, election practices and now the federal government is seeing this and is like okay we're gonna try to supersede that in the state level and then the biggest conflict is let is to let the states leave them alone but then again everyone's not leaving the elections office alone in this case uh, all right so another thing that's happening as well is the NCAA, NCAA uh, student athletes are finally gonna get be able to get benefits from being used by the NCAA which uh, the Supreme Court has said Current NCAA limited benefits for student athletes said it violated the antitrust law. The Supreme, the Supreme upheld a smaller court decision which could have students prioritize their involvement based on business model. And so far, NCAA has reaped the benefits of commercializing sports with no compensation for students until now. But of course, don't expect a large sum of money because this was mostly acquiring student computers, books, and other school supplies that would have never been covered by the NCAA. Uh, a big change in it, and it makes it easier for college to retain athletes that would usually bypass the college experience to try to go with a fast track to professional sports. And there are former athletes that don't have a fallback after their uh, professional career. So in a lot of ways, uh, when you give a six-figure uh, deal to a young kid or even a seven-figure deal for their professional life, a um, lot of money in uh, the young's hand has a tendency to be uh, fleeting. And uh, yeah, so uh, there is a lot of resulting famous millionaires who are now pinching pennies. Sorry, Dan Marino. This uh, the U.S. looks to uh, looks like 70% of Americans will not have the two doses or uh, the at least one dose by July 4th. Um, projections have seen many uh, major slowdowns in shots in arms, with 56 of adults fully vaccinated and 80% recommended for what would be considered herd immunity. And speaking of herds, Missoula, um, the Missoula City Band gathered in a normal setting last Wednesday to uh, kick off their official first performance. The week before, they had their big band performance where they had a lot of their heavy hitters here in Missoula playing some uh, jazz music. But last week, we did our typical performance. And I say our because I am one of the members of the city band. And you guys can check it out. It is an ongoing experience, 8 p.m. every Wednesday. And if you want to get involved, uh, their rehearsals are at 7 p.m. at the same place at Bonner Park. All right, so let's see. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for my new segment. I do have a uh, special guest for you guys. Uh, and here is Laura DeGaulle. Actually, just uh, bear with me for another second or two. I am now experiencing the uh, overall <laughs> lack <laughs> of people messing with <laughs> the system back here. So let's, let's make this sure this all works out. And then we'll get you guys going for this. And here we go. Here is the interview. <laughs> hey, guys. We're here with Missoula Aging Services. Um, you are a volunteer uh, service supervisor. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Laura. And she's here to talk about uh, Senior Companion. Senior Companion program, yes. So Senior Companions are volunteers who are age 55 and older who want to help people remain living independently in their own homes. So what they do is they go to the homes, they will help people who are living in their homes to get out to the grocery store or go shopping a lot of out to lunch days. People who don't get to get out of their homes get very lonely and isolated. And especially coming out of the pandemic, it's super important for volunteers to want to step forward and help those people who are still remaining isolated, even though you're out, the client necessarily isn't. Yes. So. And some people can't get out and some yes. of the people are homebound and it is, it, it is difficult to really have this uh, um, kind of contact, especially in the pandemic times that we live in. So what were some of the things that the Senior Companionship did as a result of the pandemic? During the pandemic, so volunteers have often and always served in person. And when we weren't allowed to see people in person again, what we did was allowed for telecare service. So they would make phone calls, whether it was daily or weekly. It was what the volunteer and the, and the client themselves wanted to, to get their schedules worked together just to help combat that isolation. And now we are able to go full bore because people have been vaccinated and we're able to get back out into in-person service again. And I can't tell you how excited everybody is yeah. about this. And I heard that Missoula is vaccinated like a lot more than any other county in the state of Montana. That's what so, I've heard. And Missoula is definitely right on the, on the right track. I've seen, seen less and less masks being worn in this community. And um, it's definitely a great opportunity for people to even be a part of. And how can people be a senior companion? Sure. 
Senior companions, like I said, they have to be age 55, and we are able to supplement income. So we provide and pay for all the costs of this program, so people of any income can come in and be a part of our companion program. And we'll, we supplement that, and how you do that is to reach out to Missoula Aging Services, ask for the volunteer programs. You'll reach me, Laura, and you can call 728-7682 or you can jump onto our website at missoulaagingservices.org and apply right online and your application will come right to me. Yep. And just so you guys know, the Missoula Aging Services promotes the um, independence, dignity, and health of aging adults and those who care for them. Oh my gosh, that was fantastic. Yep. You did what I didn't do, I'm yep. impressed. Oh, 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 it has to be said. It has, it to, has be. to be it said. Has to be Nicely said. done. So I, I'm really glad, uh, just kind of going a little bit off topic, but how is Missoula Aging Services doing right now so far? Really, really well. We've started up many different new programs throughout this pandemic. We have never stopped serving clients. Clients have been served via telephone, via Zoom. We've taught people how to, given people tablets and taught them how to use email and Zoom, connect with their doctors. We're starting up a new in-home care services where there's gonna be some home modifications allowed. There's a new money management program, lifelong connections programs. Mm -hmm. Like we have just taken this opportunity to grow and strengthen our older adult population in the community. That's really good. Cause I know that the relief program really helped relieve a lot of these programs in place, not just uh, childcare, but also many other programs that aim to help individuals and um, groups Mm -hmm. And most of our programs that we had in the work, we had in the works prior to COVID, we just didn't slow down. So we just kept on keeping on. And like I said, we've brought on multiple new programs and continue to serve people. We are in a soft opening right now because our building is under construction. So oh, so you're no longer at the location off of uh, behind Orange Street Food Farm? Nope, we are still located on Stevens Avenue right off of, right behind Orange Street Food Farm. But because the front of our building is being remodeled, it's not necessarily safe for people to come in. Safe for COVID, not safe for construction, but that is anticipated to be completed this summer and we are anxiously looking forward to having in-person services. Awesome. So once again, if you wanna learn more information, you can go to missoulaagingservices.org to learn more about Senior Companion. And just uh, kind of like a quick overview, once again, uh, tell the people at home, uh, Senior Companions, what is the importance for Senior Companions in our community? Being a senior companion in our, com in our community is actually a threefold purpose. One, the volunteer gets to increase their longevity of life. They get to reduce their own depression, their own isolation, and even more importantly, they get to increase their mobility. They decrease any pain. There are so many benefits to being a volunteer for you personally. For the recipient of your services, that person is also more mobile, they're more able to stay in their home longer, on living on their own. And so that also helps with the community costs so that the community themselves aren't needing to necessarily help with our tax dollars to pay for assisted living facilities for that person because they're able to stay at home. And then there's also the other part of it where many people are caregivers and we are able as volunteers to come in and relieve caregivers to reduce that burden at home so that the caregiver themselves can get back out and live their own life and have a break because everybody needs a break from caregiving. It's, it's very emotional work. So we relieve that as well. So it's a win, win, win all the way around. Well, thanks for joining us, Laura. Well, thank you so much for having me. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about movies that are coming out this week. And it's time for my pre-critic where I prejudge a movie based on absolutely nothing. But this next movie, I have some experience. Uh, as you know, family is uh, literally anyone walking down the street in this particular movie. Sure, if you're family, uh, sure, if you're there, you're family. And you are. Welcome to the fast-paced and fast -paced world of Fast and Furious, the ninth installment, Sands Rock. Uh, with some fun with family and people screaming as they do ri ridiculous stunts like flying to the moon or whatever. Uh, I apologize for uh, <laughs> uh, for calling Taiwan a country and you will never see another Fast and <laughs> Furious movie again. We dive into a globe trotting antics of the Fast family as Dom, Don or whatever, must fight his actual brother, John Cena, um, and his very likable but cookie cutter muscle bro in the their fight against the Decept uh, Decepticons or whatever, but they do um, heights and end the violence and exciting escapes from the government, black ops, and other countries that seem bad, but 
become family after a nice cold corona and a hot booty to boot. Up next, we got a yet another movie where uh, an old man puts one over on the feds. Who have uh, been known f to use shady practices to get the job done at all costs? I'm talking about a movie that is called Lansky, a movie about Harvey Keitel type in a movie where he is gaslighted into turning over his state to the government. Man, this sounds like it happens all the time, but I assume this is <laughs> also based on a true story. I'm assuming he pulls a fast one on the feds by directing them to a spot where the feds use up their resources and give up uh, with that one fed who uh, needs to nail this man at any cost. Blah, blah, blah. The feds are fed up with fed up and become too fed for feds to handle. You get it? Good. Moving on. Up next, we got a video game from the creative minds of Boulder Gates. Uh, Dark Alliance comes the ripoff D Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance, where you play a, <coughs> a co-op with your friends. That was a real cop. I'm not making that up. But adventures seem like a good idea, but you probably should pass unless you want to get a group of friends together to play. Online gaming always has that one kid who shouldn't be playing with uh, man babies and some girls who sound like kids can make you confused but as soon as it's okay the boys will take the liberty to white knight their way into until she admits that she has a boyfriend and then simp out completely okay it gets too based on a true story for my own good the end there's are your <laughs> pre-critic uh, uh content that's coming out this weekend as well here is the return of dude i just drew um featuring a new kind of drawing uh way uh, presented by uh, Rowan Lemus and uh, with a special guest, uh, Jack Catmull. Welcome back to Do I Just Drew Season 2. After a long hiatus of not being in a studio and being in Zoom, we're back and we got a special cool new thing for you. Uh, you know, we have a classic five, five rounds, five minutes, and we're going to do something new for all of that. We have only two suggestions. Who are all the guests? You're really welcome. As always, bye. Drops his beats on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Check. Oh dang! How do I drop? Why, Jack? why did you? Why did you drop that? Did you start the timer? Oh. <laughs> Jack. Jack. Ah! Jack's cheating, guys. No, no, no. Jack is a cheater. I haven't had a pizza. Oh, well, I had pizza in Texas. Yeah, Texas. I did not drop that pizza in Texas. But you didn't. It's a really big piece of pizza, Jack. You yeah. really dropped a pretty big piece of pizza. <laughs> no, I'm. <laughs> no, no, no. See, see, this is what it looks like. Okay, so like, like. <laughs> oh, it's expensive. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Beat that, Rowan. Why are there birds on the ground? <laughs> <laughs> That's grass. Well, no. Oh. <laughs> uh, space. Don't worry about it. What? <laughs> It escapes to the one place uncorrupted by capitalism. <laughs> uncorrupted by capitalism. Space! Space! <laughs> Jack, what do you know about space? Um, no. I know space oh, oh, looks like oh, yeah, a bondage. Space. So capitalism is uh, entered into space. This is the part of the show where uh, Rowan starts dunking on the guests. Yeah, that's the part where <laughs> Right now he's doing a victory lap. Haha, <laughs> yeah. And as you can see, Jack is just getting angrier and angrier. <laughs> as yeah. you can see. He's just bottling up all those. He's moves. bottling up all yeah. those. Wow! <laughs> Rowan. Well, yeah. that's mine. Space. Space Ace. My space. My space. My space. <laughs> 
He looks like E.T. from the back. <laughs> from the back. <laughs> from the back. The back of his head. He's like, no, don't shoot me. And then he gets shot to death. Oh, oh wow. Man, that is a scary show. Neil, <laughs> you gave away our sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> you gave away our sponsor. It's called a Segway. I might as well just leave. Because, like, I... I, I you ruined everything. This is going to be like a big, a big reveal. You'll <laughs> see. <laughs> all right, Jerome, what happens after Jack drops After the Jack pizza? drops the pizza. No pizza. No pizza. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Sorry, I was, I was staring at the screen over here. Eat Jack. That's how, that's how it ends. What, what did the chicken say to the rug? <laughs> <laughs> you shall not get <laughs> my pizza. Is that the Facebook logo? <laughs> <laughs> Fix it. This is You're right, I do see a cross in there. I, I do. don't want religion. In my I don't want it. <laughs> Both the cross and the Facebook logo. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to tell us something, Jack? <laughs> Got the pit of despair, the, 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 the pit of fire, despair, anger, sadness. He's just Dante's Inferno. Don, Dante's, Dante's Inferno. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Stop! There it is. This I is a beautiful it. It. miracle. Of... Oh, I like that. It's like it... four million seconds. Yeah. Like with mine, I went like, it's evil, but then when you went here, it's like, <laughs> the alien wants just a hug. Oh my god, my leg! Roman! No! <laughs> no, he doesn't do it. He, he like, accidentally he lets him go. He, he treats him like a pet for a while, and then he, the, the human floats off and uh, gets uh, untangled it's... from its leash and into the pet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jeez. He's been empowered by the pizza. <laughs> He's been empowered <laughs> by the pizza. It's a, it's a power up. It's a. <laughs> It's it's a guy. This is that's just leveled up. Really yeah, quick. it is. It's like so cool. Check my ass and check the box. <laughs> <laughs> check my ass. Check. Oh, Graham. There once was a man named Jack. He walked down the sidewalk with a bad back. Um, <laughs> his mom only had the gluten intolerance gene. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> his mom was the only one. So it's not hereditary. It's not her <laughs> it skipped a generation. So he, he figured out he could eat the pizza, and the and he saw that the the that he threw the pizza and aimed it directly at a monster in the ground that was part of the world, and threw himself into the pit, not knowing what it would uh, be down there. Turned out to be monstrous, uh, evil beings from uh, the digestive system of this uh, uh, very acidic digestive system. Uh, <laughs> it once was a man, and he was in Ken Kentucky, <laughs> and he wanted to become an astronaut. And to make matters worse, an alien came out and attacked. But just as he thought all hope was lost, <laughs> he was pulled in by the alien for a hug. <laughs> He found out this thing creates its own ozone layer and it saved him. Until suddenly, it swooped up into the sun. And, Gerald! Cried the alien. <laughs> don't go! Uh, I'm not that one. <laughs> <laughs> Another great episode. Uh, so cool. Um, thank you for watching. You guys can find me on Instagram, uh, no word arts. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, no word arts. Uh, you can also find me on Shrine Comics, where I make a comic book called Punch Drunk. It's about the Hell Hate people fighting. You guys can check it out, shrinecomics.com. It's great to be back. Uh, fun episode, and I hope I can catch you guys later. See you in the next episode. Bye bye. Bye.
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some city council and never talk about what you just saw. Uh, moving on, let's kick things off with uh, a meeting all about them. Um, the city wants to speed up the process for future development um, as Missoula is growing. They want to hopefully hire more staff members to uh, pr uh, go through the permitting process with developers. So Aaron Pian, who's been working with dev local developers in the city of Missoula, is talking about um, more about this, and this is what she had to say. In February, we began meeting with stakeholder groups that consisted of contractors, developers, architects, and engineers, all of whom are facing frustrations with the current system. Over the course of three months, we worked with these stakeholders to better understand their frustrations and to develop clear actions that would provide tangible results. The resulting plan was unanimously supported by these stakeholders, all of whom agreed that a reasonable increase in fees on the front end that reduced timely delays on the back end would save them money that would be passed on to renters and homeowners, positively impacting the housing market as a whole. All right, so the, the main point is that they're gonna uh, raise the, the rates on uh, the developers, but the turnaround of this is, would be to hopefully save time and, 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 and as a result, save money. So they have uh, short-term goals and they have uh, medium-term goals that they wanna implement within this process. and. Uh, Let's see, let's check my notes. So it seems like they will pay more upfront to be uh, to have uh, at the front end to be able to bypass many back end or last minute updates that may come up. And so far the original plan was to uh, kind of discussed a few months ago was to create a sliding scale of development based on volume and the, the units associated with it dependent upon rezoning of some areas and other little things that may have to come up a th along the way. But the three major steps they uh, to make this move smoothly and the staffing uh, is more staffing, reassessing the process to make it smoother, and uh, code reform. Part of this has to do with enough staff to work with developers to create a uh, presentations that you see via these public hearings and whatnot, so they want to have more people to uh, work through and work with. So Aaron uh, talks about the different uh, processes um, that are going to be implemented. You'll see we have these listed in short-term outcomes within six months, and these include things like reducing the permit review times for single-family homes and duplexes from 10 to 12 weeks to two to four weeks. So you'll see we've set really audacious yet achievable goals. Our medium-term outcomes, which we propose to uh, achieve in the next 12 months, include broader programmatic and code reform issues, along with department-wide process improvements that we know will be necessary to not just deal with the development surge in front of us, but make sure that we are functioning on a really high sophisticated level to be able to apply new processes, new code, um, as we continue to see development and growth in Missoula. All right, so then one of the biggest things that uh, about living in Missoula is the uh, overall fact that uh, there are seasons. And uh, usually during the winter seasons, there's this is when they start talking about uh, potential development. They hope to start in the spring during construction season. And uh, yeah, th I mean, that's, you know, we, we have those coined terms, construction season, road season, all that stuff associated with spring, summer, and all that stuff. But during the winter, it's the time to uh, permit and uh, request a lot of these things. And uh, with more staffing at, th like at this particular avenue, they're able to, um, hopefully make the focus in and be able to help more people move forward on this. But here is Gene, just from the words themselves, uh, who is a developer who has been working with Aaron Pian on updating this process, and this is what Gene had to say. I think the development and building community just hasn't felt that they have been um, heard um, or saw any action to our request. So um, I've stayed involved with Aaron um, through most of the process, and uh, like she says in her thing we still got a long ways to go but at least we're headed in the right direction so. all right so that was gene and uh he did continue to talk a little bit more uh about how this is a good process gene is convinced that we'll start seeing some more success moving forward on this and being able to uh have more staff you can talk to uh in person and only serves to help further along all right so here's aaron P Pian. So she over talks about uh, the overall savings. You know, you might have a higher cost for the for fermenting process, but you get more out of it as a result. We have spoken with developers where six to eight weeks uh, could result in savings simply from carrying costs alone of, of 10 to $20,000. And again, those savings directly get um, either passed on to or costs get assessed to the eventual homeowner when we're talking about homeownership opportunities. 
we've had a few instances of individuals who have had to refinance their entire project over uh, a six to 12 week delay. Um, there are things like security agreements that, that have timeframes to them. And when those expire, developers have to renew those. And so in some instances where an entire refinancing is required or new security agreements, have to be or security agreements have to be renewed because of, of delays that could cost projects upward of 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars. And and that I would say is for a relatively moderate sized project like a, a six to ten unit TED. So when we're talking about very large subdivisions or very large multifamily development, you 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 only multiply those. And so I, I do think what we're hearing across the board, and I think what you're seeing from the development community in there. Um, embracing of a reasonable fee increase is that the, the cost of time is disproportionately um, negatively impacting these projects as opposed to uh, a necessary fee to build the capacity and eliminate that that time delay. All right, so that was Aaron Pian. Sorry about that uh, thing I didn't even notice when I was editing the video. But anyways, uh, that was a nice note to end on. And, you know, just with future development, this will put a hold until next Monday, which where they'll be talking about it in uh, public comment is still open on this item. Uh, so the Committee of the Whole is looking to fund the uh, new uh, st uh, a new election here in the county and refer to uh, the new municipal court uh, requirements that the state has uh, passed requ requiring communities like Missoula County to vote for our uh, municipal judges while in the past was uh, basically appointed by uh, councils. Uh, so Marty talks more about uh, pricing details in terms of how much is it going to cost for primaries in the area. So this is what Marty had to say. The citywide cost uh, for the mail ballot includes one drop-off location in every word. So if you add more drop-off locations, those need to be stacked. So those costs might be a little bit higher. So clearly these are estimates. Uh, we're not totally sure what the final cost will be, but uh, this is, uh, but the elections office is sent a polling place election uh, citywide, $146,756 and some change and a uh, polling place election for uh, each in, in a ward uh, is about $24,500 for the November. All right, so I'm going to cut her off real quick. I just want to speed this along. But the whole idea is that the cost $114,000 for mail-in and $146,000 for uh, the polling places and all uh, six wards in the city of Missoula to vote in the primary uh, in September and another chunk of change for the November election. So the city decided to lean towards more mail-in voting for primary elections because it's cheaper and the election has uh, to happen in terms of new state law that requires election for municipal judges in the communities. Gwen Jones talks about the importance of having primaries because, you know, a lot of people are thinking is like, hey, you know, that there's only like, there's no one uh, challenging the primaries. Why should there be an election? And so this is what um, Gwen Jones had to say. I think it's really important that we have a primary so that we ultimately have someone elected to these positions by a majority, not by a plurality. Um, that's the way our system is set up. I think that's the way that we get the best candidates, frankly, who are engaged and vested and work hard. Um, I do not like when candidates are elected by a fluke, basically, by not having a majority behind them. I think it's just incredibly important. Um, and All right, so that's what uh, Gwen Jones had to say uh, in terms of the election. Um, party lines aside, it bolsters candidates and has a better pool to choose from in the long run. So please mail in your ballot, and the post office will actually, w in terms of mailing in your ballot, if you don't have postage on it, it still goes to the place. But in turn, the costs uh, are go to the city, uh, which in turn are come back from you. <laughs> so uh, regardless of whether you put stamps on there or not, uh, it's better just to go to the mini drop-off boxes in the areas. Uh, so far, there were some questions about the validity of hosting a primary for uh, as little as two candidates, but it was struck down, and as long as there's at least two people running on party-lined elections, there should be a primary regardless of the cost. Admin and Finance, the city moves to uh, mo uh, get the money to acquire a new federal building. Hey, um, you know that uh, federal post office building downtown, that really nice historic building? It was built in, like, 1911. So, so far, the building is worth $15 million, and the city will not have to pay that. Uh, government to government acquisition is very easy. This is not uncommon uh, for uh, 
government bodies to do land swaps for single dollars uh, with the understanding that in this case of a memorandum of understanding for the usage of and potential rel relinquishing of the property in the future. John Adams, uh, he, d he made a presentation during this meeting and this is what he had to say in terms of uh, acquiring this uh, former federal post office. Uh, we propose, staff proposed joint ownership with Missoula County. Roughly 50-50 building the cost split to kind of navigate that as we work out an agreement and it may fluctuate over time, but that's the, that's the basic story. Rehabilitation of the federal building would cost less than or the same as alternative space solutions. It would house the entire county administrative center and also the entire city downtown campus, except Missoula Police Department. And if all went according to plan, we'd occupy the building in late 2024. All right, so that was John Adams talking a little bit more about that. Um, let's go back to my notes. So in terms of, of the police, uh, it doesn't seem like they will continue using the downtown offices along with the uh, building on Catlin Street adjacent to the last bowl in Ellen, Missoula. And if you're from Missoula, you, you'll understand that. But the original post office building was built in 1911 and was renovated in 1938. And the federal building made uh, the National Registry in 1979. Uh, it's been used as a post office. The last uh, group that was in there was the, uh, the Forestry Department. Uh, for a while, the National Forestry Department, and they left in 2015. And uh, most of the uh, post office operations, the main ones, are the ones that are off of Brook Street. So John Adams, uh, with some pictures, talks a little bit more uh, background uh, with the site. Federal building is important as a symbolic statement about the role and value of our government institutions, of our public lands, because of its association with Region 1 and of Missoula's place as one disproportionately awesome part of the United States of America. As Jeremy Keene put it to me, it was important when it was built 100 years ago, and it's important today. Federal buildings. All right, so that is uh, one of the uh, major historic landmarks here in the city of Missoula besides uh, the Wilma Theater. It's been, a long, uh, been around a lot longer than the Wilma Theater too as well. And the city will move into the spot that has housed many government entities. And like I said, uh, the forestry uh, services moved out in 2015 and it was declared a government surplus just in 2020, I believe it was June 2020, which uh, goes to potential government control. But if nothing happens, it would go to auction. And uh, John Adams, uh, through the presentation, talks a little bit more about the costs. When we expressed interest in acquiring the building, the city and county proposed to do so under the National Park Service Historic Surplus Property Program. So under this program, we'd receive the building for free. Now, essentially, we make a deal with GSA and the Park Service, GSA being General Service Administration. Pardon me. The deal is this, you give us the building and we'll preserve it in perpetuity. So if you have done or want to dig through our proposed application to the National Park Service, you can get a sense of how that works which is that we'll preserve most of the remaining his important historic elements of the building, like the post office lobby and the Northwest entrance. And we'll restore some things like the historic circulation corridors and basement windows. And we'll continue into the future to work with the National Park Service and the State Historic Preservation Office to ensure that any changes we make to the building are well considered. Uh, all right. So uh, John Adams, just uh, another note as well during this meeting is that uh, they also have a uh, a little gardening uh, center in the building as well, like a, uh, a greenhouse, which is pretty cool. Um, so with the renovations, they hoped that pretty much all government entities, it will be a, like a one-stop shop here in the city of Missoula. So Dale Bickle, um, you know, there are going to be costs associated with renovations and updating the buildings and make it up to uh, code in terms of like internet access, uh, being able to broadcast from there and uh, host public meetings for the public. So Dale Bickle, Chief Administrative Officer for the City of Missoula, talks about funding sources uh, for the move. There are, s there are some eligible components in ARPA that we could uh, allocate to this facility and we, we would consider that um, in this year's and next year's uh, budget process. Um, then there th we also have the opportunity to expand um, one of the downtown urban renewal districts and that would be a, uh, um, a consideration that uh, that council could make um, and uh, um, the, a joint building of the Sydney County would uh, qualify as public infrastructure under Montana law. Um, and then finally, uh, we do have the ability to uh, issue uh, bonds um, to do this. We have, a, we have an ability to limited obligation bonds are um, 
th it is limited on how much we can uh, uh, issue bonds for, but that could be that could uh, be a portion of this as well. So we have all kinds of opportunities um, to uh, fund this building. All right. So uh, many uh, and not not just talking about opportunities to fund the building, but uh, money that will be saved in the long run. And I uh, so so far. Uh, uh, the city pays $180,000 a year on leasing many spaces for Missoula government entities, and this would also save money in that regard in the long run. But if you want to know, it's a $40 million estimate in cost going towards this building. Both is going to be contributed by the city and the county, so $2 million for each side will go towards the building. And over the next 12 years, between an even split between city and county government, um, and so far they do want to make sure that they uh, move in by 2024. All right, so that's about it for my city council meeting. Uh, I do have a fun video for you guys in a second, but as always, if you're interested in finding out more about your local government, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. Um, all you really got to do is you can Google City of Missoula website, and you can pop this up, and this is what you should be seeing as soon as the city government pops up. So right now, I do have a very fun video for you guys. It is... Um, uh, from the Zach, it is c uh, from the cabaret show, The Ladies Who Lead, and this is a, um, <laughs> uh, uh, the lyrics changed, but the music's the same, so you'll know exactly uh, what you're getting as soon as you see this.
Hey guys, welcome back. That was a nice interlude for sure. We were going to be uh, streaming another thing that's coming up uh, for the Zootown Arts Community Center, and that'll be uh, the next Comedy Nights, and then followed by uh, Much Ado About Nothing, which will be performed by Nevin, who's been using our studio for uh, some rehearsals uh, and acting and whatnot. So if you are interested in learning more about this and more, you can go to ZootownArts.org, but also you can go to MCAT.org for streams and more moving forward. So let's talk about events. This is a little bit of events before I wrap up my show. This is the MCPS Summer Meal uh, Program, various locations around uh, Missoula, including in uh, Missoula Public Library. This is a summer meals program for anybody who is aged, uh, just basically any age to the age of 18, must be in school. And this is a 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. no meal services on July 5th. But this is a, a great opportunity for children who do not need to be present for meals to be given out. And these sites will be open, and you can check it out through the... Uh, Missoula Food Bank information as well. So stroller stroller strides. Like I've been saying the last couple weeks, if you are a mother and you have a stroller and you want to work out, this is a great thing to do. It's going to ha it happen at Tool Park every week at 9.30 a.m. Virtual story time is happening at the Missoula Public Library, and this is story time. They're doing in-person story time, and they're doing also an online version for some parents who uh, feel as though they're not too comfortable with a big group of kids, but this is a, 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 an amazing opportunity. And the story time sessions are on the Facebook page and website every Friday at 10.30 a.m. MCAT produces these videos. Excuse me. Hands-on science mysteries. Spectrum Discovery Area uh, hosts many different uh, science-based activities during their open hours here at the uh, Mizzou the new Missoula Public Library on 455 East Main Street. The Frog Prince. Yes, in person now. MCT Center for Performing Arts uh, for uh, performances July this month. Uh, deep in the royal swamps, a lonely frog retrieves a golden ball for Princess Prim in exchange for friendship and comfort. The spoiled princess doesn't want to live up to her part of the bargain and puts the royal knights on alert. And so the trouble begins. Luckily, Frog gets some good advice from Ollie, the wise aspen tree, a well-read alligator. And I'm not going to go on too much about this, but it's a fun uh, uh, new take on the princess and the frog. A wonderful performance by Missoula Children's Theater and during a lot of their camps. And so they have a performance at 4, and they also have a performance at 6 p.m. And it's going to be in July in a month. Just giving you guys a heads up. Uh, let's see. Missoula Paddleheads Baseball. Oregon, Far uh, oh <laughs> Oregon Park in Allegiance Field. Missoula versus Ogden. Uh, that's going to happen tonight at 7 p.m. A bike to the ballpark. And if you bike to the ballpark, you get uh, special prizes, baseball, neon bike rides, just all sorts of fun. And you can visit uh, gopaddleheads.com for more information on that. Saturday Markets. Hey, if you're interested in learning more about MCAT, MCAT does our regular tours around 10 a.m. Uh, this is part of our orientation that we ask folks to be a part of before they start checking out any of the MCAT type equipment, which uh, is the equipment that I use to produce my show here for your viewing pleasure. Um, and uh, like I said, always Saturdays are all your farmer's market, people's market, uh, River Street market, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Get all your local goods uh, bought and sold there. Moon Randolph Homestead, open Saturdays, 11 a.m. If you're interested in going to see one of Missoula's last remaining homesteads, um, you guys could go to the M Moon Randolph Homestead. They have summer hours that go into October, and it happens from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Paint Your Pet, Painting with a Twist. They have all these events and fun uh, activities. And if you like your pet as much as most people do, you guys can go to Painting with a Twist to paint your pet. And then we have some live music with Josh Farmer t uh, Saturday night with uh, at the Cranky Sam Public House. And, yep, it's going to be outside, so uh, weather permitted. Uh, the Brick uh, Pride Party is going to be at the Union Club. They're creating a Pride of the Union Hall, music, DJs, drag, and free STI testing on site. Uh, DJ Chris Moon every Saturday at 10 p.m. at the Ballander, DJ Music Club, blah, 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 stuff like that. And those are your Saturday events. And I am trying to r go uh, enough time because I do have another fun video I want to show you guys from the Iris Garden. So Sunday, let's talk about Hip Strip Movie Night, The General, with the live score by Travis Yost. This is at the Missoula Senior Center. They're going to have some live music playing, um, uh, what's, oh God, I got a, one of the most revered comedies of the silent era. This film finds hapless railroad engineer Johnny Gray, uh, otherwise known as Buster Keaton, and they're going to be playing some live music. Someone who uh, has a score and will be playing the live piano in association with the silent film. So it'll be fun uh, uh, at the um, Hip Strip Movie Night Missoula Senior Center. So that happens at 8.30 p.m. on Sunday. All right. So that about does it for my events. You can go to MissoulaEvents.net. 
I want to end my show with a nice short video that I uh, made, and this is uh, a, a chance for you guys to go check out Fort Missoula. They have a nice iris garden. But also, if you're interested in going to the University of Montana, just go to the uh, the the M Summit and go next to the uh, amphitheater, and you have the Peonies Garden there as well. So, without further ado, here is the garden at the Fort Missoula, otherwise known as the Iris Garden. <laughs> Thank you. 